Hi, and welcome to a new season of Nerd Notes. I'm your host, Coach Stolliker. I know you spent the last five months wondering, would the most edutaining show ever filmed in a storage closet be back for another go? Well, quiet your fears, boys and girls, because I'm back and better than ever. I know that I had to bring the good stuff for a second season, so I grew out this sweet goatee and thought of some great topics to put, get you to put Fortnite down and do some learning. Speaking of Fortnite, what better way to start off this year by talking about the history of video games? No cheat codes necessary. This is Nerd Notes. Video games were invented in the 1950s by manipulating the signal in a cathode ray oscilloscope, a type of electronic test instrument that allows observation of various signal voltages. Simply called Tennis for Two, it was a sports simulation video game developed by American physicist William Higginbotham. In 1966, Ralph Bayer was working as an engineer for a defense contractor when he scribbled out a four-page description for a game box that would allow people to play action, sports, and other games on their television sets. Over the years, he churned out seven prototypes in a secret workshop before landing on a version that he would use to file the first video game patent in 1971. Bayer is considered the godfather of video games for his contribution. His design went on sale as the Magnavox Odyssey in 1972, the world's first home video game system. By the mid-1970s, Atari had also released the 2600 gaming system with classic games like Pong and Space Invaders, but interest began to wane because the quality of the home product lagged far behind that of most popular games at the local arcade. In 1985, Nintendo introduced an 8-bit Titan and its lovable princess rescuing plumber, Mario, on its hugely popular Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. They revolutionized home systems by introducing some very important concepts to the video game system industry, using a pad controller instead of a joystick, and creating authentic reproductions of arcade video games. The 1990s introduced handheld devices like the Game Boy and its widely popular puzzle game, Tetris. Though the graphics weren't what they were on a home system, video games could now be taken anywhere. Over the years, the Game Boy has spawned several popular versions, including the Game Boy Color and the 3DS. It was also during this era that arcade classics like Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat made their way to home systems like the second generation Super NES and its competitor, the Sega Genesis, thus beginning the controversy surrounding violence in video games. In 1989, Electronic Arts produced the first Madden NFL football video game, which has become one of the most long-running and profitable franchises ever. It also created a new market for gaming systems and the couch potato enthusiasts who wanted to play as their favorite athlete. This was followed by such classics as NBA Jam, as well as FIFA and MLB The Show. Side note, I love Madden so much that I named my son after it. A partnership between Nintendo and Sony would have brought CD-ROM to the game giant's platform, but the collaboration soon became a rivalry in the mid-1990s with both companies developing separate next-generation consoles with advanced graphics, the PlayStation and the N64. These improved graphics helped pave the way for first-person shooter games, or FPS, and several like the spy thriller GoldenEye and the brutal space saga Doom were early successes. However, the debate on violence in video games escalated at the end of the decade and brought about the creation of the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, or ESRB, which rates games based on content and provided material warnings for games that included mature themes or violence. In the early 2000s, a console war brewed between Sony and computer giant Microsoft, which launched the revolutionary Xbox with Halo, a game many considered to be a milestone in the FPS genre. When the PlayStation 2 was introduced in 2002, it included a DVD player that could also play movies. It would go on to become the best-selling system of all time with over 150 million units sold. In 2006, the Nintendo Wii brought about huge innovations in motion control as games were able to respond to players' physical movement. It was widely popular with families and became the only other system to sell more than 100 million units. During this time, music simulators like Guitar Hero and Rock Band were also very popular, if only for a short time. The 21st century saw the introduction of massive multiplayer online games like World of Warcraft, 
These type of games enable players to cooperate and compete with each other on a large scale, sometimes around the world. They include all types of game genres and were primarily available on personal computers, but internet connectivity has expanded to home consoles over the last decade. The latest and most popular online multiplayer games include classic arcade fighters like the DC Injustice series, competitive first-person shooter games like the Call of Duty series, or the free-to-play survival arena games like Fortnite Battle Royale. While cell phones haven't challenged the traditional video game market, games like Pokemon Go and Candy Crush were hugely successful. Many take advantage of the touchscreen technology available on Apple and Android devices and offer community support through social media like Facebook. Games will continue to evolve as long as fans like you eventually transition from consumer to creator. And that's totally possible as long as you keep on chasing greatness, doing what you love. See you next time. Do you like videos like this? You can find me on YouTube at Hero City Edworks or follow me on Twitter at Hero City Kevin.